Hi, this is Elliot, and I am making um, a report on bull snakes for my school. But, um, yeah, I have this thing going on where basically, from now on, I'm going to be researching one type of snake each week, and I'm going to be reporting it. I'm going to be making, like, kind of an essay about it, and I'm going to be making a video. So, here we go. This is a ball python. This isn't really a bull snake. I'm just using this as, as an example. But, um, it's going to be about, like, their cage. It's going to be about bull snakes' cage setup. And I'm going to be telling you about just their general needs and where where they live, what types of and what types of terrains they like to hang out in. They like sandy open country. They like they like grass fields, they like plains where there's lots of rodents for them to catch. Now the locations that they live in, I'm not quite sure about all of them, but I know that they are often found in South Dakota, and I know that they are also often found in Texas. Now the environment, I'm not entirely sure, but I all I know is that they like places where it rains a lot and where they can burrow underground. Now the reason that they burrow underground is because they are related to the gopher snake, which is a burrowing species. Generally, bull snakes will eat rodents, but they are known to eat birds and lizards and occasionally rattlesnakes. And remember, these are these are constrictors, so they squeeze their prey and swallow them whole. Now these guys are just extremely beautiful and are said to get up to 8 feet long. They're often mistaken for rattle for diamondback rattlesnakes because of the patterns on their back and because of the sound they make when they're scared. They make this loud hissing sound and they thrash their tail and it's really loud. And in case you're wondering, bull snakes, like most snakes, lay eggs. So here's my enclosure. Honestly, it works just perfect. Now most people should know that with snakes like this, you should, you should not use a heat lamp you should use a heat mat, which is what this is. That The bin itself is see-through. I'm just showing you this because it shows up black. But, um, and then right in the middle of that heat mat, you've gotta put a little probe on there that is part of the Jumpstart thermostat. And you glue it on there with silicone sealant. You gotta make sure it's 100% um, silicone, and you've got to you gotta give it a couple hours to dry, and I think I think I I used too much, but you you put it in a silicone gun, and that's how you run the stuff. So remember, that little probe is a part of the Jumpstart thermostat, which is the one I highly suggest for you. That way, because the heat mats they don't come with anything to like turn it up or down, so. I highly suggest buying this. Some heat mats come with thermostats, but I highly suggest this one. This one was pretty expensive, but it definitely did some help. Stop doing that. And um, some people use log hides like this. I, I, I honestly just like the look of it, but you don't really need it. It doesn't really matter that much, but it's important that that the snake has choices of a cold side and a warm side and a lot of people use humidity knobs in these things but um i don't i don't suggest doing that i what i suggest is using a humidity box which honestly for me works well so i i just got a cheap little box from the store put some soaked soaked spag moss in um, water and then put it in the box and for the fibers for the fibers honestly they're just cheap old aspen fibers like they work great um because some people use like paper towels or newspapers but then you have to change the whole bedding every time it poops once so but with this you can just spot clean boop pick it up toss it in the trash and um yeah my snake's 
keeps trying to get out of here. Sorry. But then for the water dish, some people use an expensive looking one like this. But honestly, you you really don't have to do that. You can you can just get a little a little dish as long as it's like enough for the snake to actually soak its whole body in. And um, mine's a little low right now, and my siblings dropped a couple pieces of stuff in there, so I'm gonna have to change that out. But yeah, and it's what's most important about the water dish is that it has to have a heavy base. Um, so that it can hold it, otherwise your snake will just tip it right over. But the only difference between this cage and the cage that you're going to want to set up is that the, this, the aspen fibers have to be deeper so it can burrow. That's the only difference. Other than that, yours could look al almost exactly the same as this. But anyway, I love this setup and it works perfect for me. And my snake loves it too. So yeah, there's that. And one more thing. I I mean, I did two two rows of ten holes on the sides, but I also drilled holes on the lid. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but you also have to get a Tupperware that actually clamps on. And you don't have to get four four clamps. This is just the easiest the first bin we could find, but, um, if it, if it's just, like, one that kind of pops on, the lid will just, the snake will just, like, pop the lid right off and escape, so, you know, you want one that kind of clamps on, and no one wants a loose snake in their house, so, you know. and remember, you need two hides, one on each side, one over the heat mat, and one not over it. Now, about the size of the enclosure, honestly, they they say that you should that you should have a snake that stretches out along one side of the enclosure but on, and you shouldn't put a baby snake in a bin that's like super huge right away or it'll get stressed but i talked to a breeder and what he, he told me that you actually can do that as long as you as long as you have little spots for it to curl up in and hide in. Um, and this was the, that was the breeder who I got this little girl from. Well, that's about it for the enclosure. This works perfect for bull snakes. It also works perfect for ball pythons, works perfect for corn snakes. Like it's remarkable how many snakes can fit in this exact same enclosure. And remember, the only difference that you have that is very important for a bull snake enclosure is that the bedding has to be deeper. Like, let's say three inches. Like, three inches deep would probably do. Now, the temperature that you should keep the heat mat, I, I keep mine around 90 degrees because that's just the average degrees. That's just the average amount of degrees that everyone uses for ball pythons, but I really suggest using around like 75 to 87 degrees every i mean from what i've heard that's what works pretty well and about the humidity box if you realize oh no my snake isn't using its humidity box just wait because after a while it will find out about it and so it sometimes it takes time for it to explore and I had the exact same thing where I was all scared, like, what if it never finds it? What if it can't shed because it doesn't know about its humidity box? But I, like, believe me, after a while, because they explore at night, because they get active, and they will be everywhere in their cage in the middle of the night, no matter how, like, sometimes you don't see them out, but they will explore, and they will find it. Also, another suggestion is... A lot of people like to get branches. I haven't bought mine yet because this is really new, but people buy like these these like little branches. Like you can get them from like the craft store. Just think something for them to like kind of climb on, you know? They really like that. Now, another thing I suggest is don't get a bull snake. I don't suggest getting a bull snake if you are a beginner. If you're if you're just starting out with snakes, then I would get a ball python. It's really easy to take care of and super sweet, super mellow, like, I love it. And another thing, with feeding. With feeding, you're going to have to feed it mice. So, a lot of people feed them frozen. Some people feed them live. It doesn't really matter, but feeding them frozen is so much easier. They cost just as much, although 
the way to tell the size of the mouse is is you measure the fattest part of the snake and that's about the size you want to do um yeah i'm right now i'm feeding mine pinkies which are really tiny baby mouse it's a little bit sad but i need to get over that and now if your bull snake gets really big then you're gonna have to start feeding it rats and i have a feeling that rats are going to be more expensive but hey better than letting your snake starve right now when you purchase your snake if it's if it's been eating live but you're like, I don't want to feed this live, I want to feed it frozen, I don't want to raise mice. You at least have to buy one live mouse and let it eat, just to get it eating. Get, to get it eating is the most important part. After that, you can feed it frozen and it'll work just fine. But yeah, that's about everything I know about the bull snake. I hope you enjoyed this video.